Hey guys, this is Daniel here, and today what I'm going to do is basically the redub of Gordon and the Gremlin. However, this is basically my test. So, what I will start with is the narrator's lines. So, what I'm going to be doing is basically do a narration of each of the lines. So, I will do them separately and then put them together. Though this will, however, be basically for another video. This is, however, also going to be an entry into the redubs that will be cast by James A. Williams. So, hopefully you'll enjoy them. Here is the narrator's lines. One afternoon, Gordon was steaming into the big station. He thought he'd rest for a bit before his next express run. Suddenly, his driver and fireman heard a strange noise from a dark corner of the platform. They left to investigate. Eventually, they returned with a little cuddly creature with big eyes and ears. But the next morning, Gordon's fire would not light. The fat controller had heard everything. And he did. But later on in the yards, Percy saw Gordon waiting at the turntable. Eventually, the workman fixed the turntable and Gordon was soon on his way with a special coach. Oh, sorry, coaches. He was now trying very hard to make the lost time. After a few minutes at the new station, the fat controller was concerned. At last, Thomas arrived. He was rather tired. So Gordon decided once again to make up the lost time. He started to speed up down the line. Then there was trouble. And it did. She was having a bath and hot water was splashing about all over the place. Gordon soon arrived at his final destination, where Thomas was waiting to pick up the fat controller and his special visitor. Gordon blew an extra long whistle for no reason whatsoever. This frightened the visitor's dog so much that it ran out of the station and into a field where a bull was grazing. The bull frightened the dog even more. He ran back again onto the platform and over the bridge, and he didn't stop until he jumped straight into Thomas's cab. But he had a wonderful ride all the way to the docks. The fat controller laughed. Isn't she adorable? I think I'll call her Susie. I don't think that's a good idea. Hmm, you're, pr you're probably right. It's probably a male. So I think I'll name him... No, no. I mean, we should send this thing to the police for further investigation. Oh, alright. I can't tell what's wrong with it. Hmm, it looks rather damp to me. There must be gremlins about. Come on then, Thomas. You need a drink after that signal accident. I think we'd better slow down. This line is quite old, and this could make things uncomfortable for the VIP. What's the dog's name? Now if you two have finished, can we get going? This train can't be kept waiting. Well, 
That's a special job if I ever heard one. Drivers, now says there are gremlins in the turntable. Huh, <laughs> Thomas is always late. It's that branch line of his. Things are always happening along that line and they always delay him. Ha! <laughs> that tank engine is slow and incompetent. The fat controller is expecting me to arrive on time. We're all late because of Thomas. Oh, what are gremlins? Do you think we could find one? Yes, sir. As long as the gremlins let us, sir. The ones who are in Gordon's fire, sir. That's why he's not ready yet. What's the matter, Gordon? You're late. Wow, they must be everywhere. Who is she? Oh look, she has a dog. But why would you give him that name if he's not green or hardly causes trouble? I've heard the little green men who play tricks. If the firelighter says there are gremlins, then there are. Yes, sir. I'm so sorry, sir. A signal was stuck on a red light and the signalman had to, no idea how that had happened. But luckily your visitor is here, safe and sound. I don't know, but the fat controller is very keen to please her. He's arranged a special party for her. But I told you it wasn't my fault. You're just trying to make yourself feel important again. Excuse me, sir, but who is your very important visitor? Pah! Gremlins don't exist. Not yet, anyway. They're just an excuse when things go wrong because no one knows why. Yeah, right. What will you two believe in next? Slimer? Cobra? Decepticons? Yes, sir! Silence! I'm expecting a VRP today, a very important person. She has heard that all of my engines are really useful. Please prove it. What gremlins? We'll see about that. Gordon, I'm expecting you to be on your best behaviour today. You are to pull the coach needed for my special visitor, but no high speeds please, she won't like that. Where's Thomas? He was supposed to pick up the special visitor from the docks. Indeed she is. Welcome to my railway. Oh my! This is precisely the reason why we shouldn't have bathtubs on a railway coach. Besides, no one wants to see me in the bath through these windows. This is such a weird idea. He's called Pongo, but after today, I think I'll name him Gremlin. In that case, I've met one at last. Ho ho ho. Oh, didn't I tell you? This lady is my mother, and she agrees with me that you are indeed all reliable engines. And my mother, of course, is always right. And now, here are my lines for Sir Topham Hatt's Holiday. It was a hot summer's day, and the fat controllers decided to go on holiday for a week. Thomas waited for him and his family to board his coaches. The fat controller had arranged for Thomas to take him, his wife, and his grandchildren to the seaside. The sun shone hot and bright, and the beach looked beautiful. But Lady Hat was feeling hot and bothered. 
she took her troubles out on Annie and Clarabel. Thomas was upset at such an idea. The next day, the fat controller asked Percy to take him and his family to the airfield to ride on Howard the helicopter. They were just about to climb aboard when it happened. A few days later, Howard landed near the holiday home with bad news. As soon as they landed, the fat controller spoke severely to the pilot. The fat controller soon arranged to meet up with Toby and Henrietta to take them all somewhere special. They all arrived at a little river inlet. The fat controller took the helm with his wife beside him. But life on the canal is much different to life on the rails. The family were enjoying their trip so much that they forgot to watch where they were going. And they were. Other boats tried to pull them out of the mud bank, but it was no use. Luckily, Percy soon saw what was happening and stopped. They arrived at a small seaside station. There, waiting for them, was Thomas with Annie and Clarabelle, who looked really smart with a new paint inside and out. No one said a word. Out loud, anyway. That night, the two coaches spoke to Thomas. Those coaches are old and uncomfortable. Why don't you use them as beach huts instead? And far cleaner, I might add. Oh, I say, this feels dangerous on so many levels. My goodness, what lovely coaches. So much better than those old beach huts on wheels. I say, that is painfully rude. We're not letting this rude passenger ride us again. Oh no, there's that bossy, fussy lady hat again. I tell you, if she starts insulting us again, we're both going to... It's really nice to get compliments, but no matter what we'll look like, we'll always be useful, won't we, Thomas? Of course not. We won't have anything iconic to go with your toy sets otherwise. Though I must admit, they could be smartened up. What in Audrey's name was that? That's Tiger Moth, sir. He is rude and always flies much too low. So we've noticed. Please take us up, Howard, before we all have another near-death experience. It's about Tiger Moth. He's gone missing, sir. Would you care to join the search with us? I think I'd better. Well, whatever has happened to him, it will serve him right for being such a show-off. Now, there's no need to talk like that, even if he did nearly had our heads. Let's go. There's Tiger Moth, down there. You, sir, have been showing off and was flying dangerously. I'm so sorry, sir. I guess that's one of the side effects of constantly playing Star Fox 64 as a child. Don't you start referencing things that haven't been invented yet. I shall speak to your controller and request that you are grounded. Alright then, sir. Now if there are no more interruptions, I shall return to my holiday. How does he know? Does he already know that I can see into the future? Sorry, but this isn't going to be a storyline carrying over for multiple videos. The writer isn't that kind of writer. He's not clever enough. 
はい。Look at this boat. It's beautiful. It's my special treat. It feels so nice to be away from the railway for once. Oh, would you look at that? A little wooden duck. Um, is it me or is the duck moving? Uh, Bridget, did you hear that? I think it came from those rag dolls. That's rubbish. You must be hearing things. Botheration. We're stuck. Is there anything we can do to help, sir? Indeed, there is. Thank you very much. This is the life, isn't it, dear? How ignorant is my wife not to recognize them? She can't remember the coaches she rode on a few days ago. Am I going to be paid extra for working extra hours yesterday? It's like my driver always says, sir. It's nice to take a break from it all. You're not going to turn Annie and Clarabelle into beach huts, are you? Well, I never. Of course you will. What else can go with all of those toys of me? And also, you are really useful too. And I thought you were bad, Harold, but this is worse. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.